advancing the FNA needle into the working channel. This is a 19 gauge needle. And the first step is to unlock the thumb screw here that allows us to advance the sheath forward. So we want to be sure that the sheath is exiting the working channel. And then we'll lock that back into place. Now we're going to unlock the second thumb screw to allow us to advance the needle forward. We'll just let that drop like that. And I'll push the needle forward. You can see the needle. It's very echogenic. And we'll magnify a couple of times here. And the next step is going to be to puncture the duct. We want to stay away from that cyst. See, so there's the cyst. So we want to keep it sort of like this. All right. So now I'm advancing the needle forward, and I'm in. So Jeannie is going to aspirate a little bit. And if you just move the camera up a little bit, you should see some bile come back here in a moment. You should get some bile, unless the bile is no, white. It's coming. it's coming. It's dark. So you can see that's dark bile. And now let's inject some contrast. And you'll see the contrast enter into the bile duct on the ultrasound image. Contracting, contracting, All right. contracting, more, more. Okay, let's get another more. contrast, please. And be careful not to put any air inside of the needle. So aspirate first a little bit and then inject again. That's good. And now inject again. So we want to avoid getting any air inside of our target structure. So there's more contrast. And at this point, then, if we can get a triple view, we can see what uh, the fluoroscopy looks like. So we're just going to get the floral into place. And why don't we make the floral big? The floral should be in place. OK, that's very good. And let's keep injecting contrast. Injecting more. And now we're just going to take a quick look. And you can see the bile duct filling there. We've magged up some. That's very nice. Good. So uh, I, I'm sure that this is the common bile duct. You can see the cystic duct coming off at the top, just as we saw on the EUS. All right. So now we're ready to put our guide wire in. We're going to aspirate back. Put some water so it's not sticky. Good. So um, Jeannie is, is flushing the needle with some water because the bile is very sticky. So now there we have water going into the bile duct. We see that very nicely on the EUS. So let's have the EUS image large again, please. Perfect. And now we are going to pass our guide wire, our super stiff wire, into the bile duct. So in terms of the anatomy, uh, again, we have the portal vein. We have the hepatic artery, and we have the bile duct here. And this is uh, p possibly the, even the takeoff of the cystic duct, as we saw earlier. What we want to make sure of is that our wire is going up into the common hepatic duct and not into the cystic duct. So that's why we are using fluoroscopy. Although we don't really need to necessarily have the wire up in the common hepatic duct in terms of the stent placement. So here's our wire coming in. So let's take a look. Because our stent is going to be flush up against the wall. So let's advance the, so the wire is actually going downstream. Right? It's going in the wrong direction. It's going downstream, so we want it to go upstream. And we may not be able to get it to go upstream. Um, you saw this would be perfect for a rendezvous, but he's completely obstructed. And so for that reason, it's still going downstream. Jeannie, you can see when the wire goes the right direction there. It might be going the right direction now, so let's take a look. And let's uh, mag up a little bit more, please, if you could. Uh, so the wire's going into the cystic duct, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, the wire is up in the cystic duct. Uh, it's actually coiling inside of the bile duct. But that's okay, too. I think that's going to be fine. If you can advance it a little bit more, that'd be great. But if it's not going, then let's just leave it like that. Coiled. Ah, uh, there it is. Uh, it's just, just sort of, yeah, there. It just popped up. Do you see? Right? The wire just... So you can pull back some. This is actually a very nice view on the EUS. So now we're ready to do an exchange. Advance forward, Jeannie. And I'm going to lock this into place, the thumb screw back up. And we're going to now remove this. And our next step will be to take our cystotome 
and advance it over the wire. And as soon as we have the wire, we'll clamp it down. Okay, so I'm now advancing the cystotome over the wire, and I have my elevator closed so that I can feel when the cystotome hits the end. And our, the nurse is uh, giving traction on the wire, allowing me to advance. So if she doesn't pull on the wire a bit, I'm not able to advance. And it's going smoothly. And in a moment, I should be there. Now I'm feeling something, so I think I'm about there. So let me just uh, take a look at my view here a little bit to, to see. Pull a little bit, Jeannie. A little bit more negative. A little bit more negative, yes. More negative. Having a lot of uh, breathing movements here. Okay, now you see the cystotope coming out. You can see it's very bright. And I'm pushing it up against the wall. So this, this gives you a sense of where the duodenal wall is. The duodenal wall starts here. What that means is that the thickness here is almost a centimeter. So we've got a bit of thickness here to deal with. And uh, so we're going to have to... Uh, burn through that thickness now, the duodenal wall thickness, with the cystotome. We're going to use pure cutting current. That's very important to use pure cutting current. So we're ready now to burn through the wall. And I'm through, I believe. I'm going to check and make sure that I'm through. Yes, there it is. You can see very nicely the tip of the cystotome here. So I'm through. One could also use fluoroscopy, but there's no need for that right now. We're going to do an exchange now. And what this part needs to happen very quickly, where we pull out the cystotome, replace it with the axial stent catheter, because as soon as we pull out, we're going to have some leakage. All right, go ahead. A 10, please. 10. 10 axial prepared, please. Okay, I've clamped down on the wire now. And we're going to, as soon as we get this out, and I'm pulling pretty quickly now, we'll put the... Axios in. Okay, we're going to take off the biopsy port right now. Clamp it down. Clamping down on our wire. And now very quickly advance the Axios catheter, which is 10.5 French, over the wire. Time is of the essence now. Because literally as we wait there will be some leakage of bile. So in just a moment, we should have the Axios catheter going down the working channel. And so the challenge is to get it to go across the wall. And we want to keep our eye on the EOS view because we don't want to shift any planes during this period. We want the catheter to go in as smoothly as possible. I've now lure locked this down. I'm ready to unlock here and advance the sheath forward. We're advancing the axial sheath forward. I've opened up the working channel to advance the axial sheath forward. I'm pushing through, and I'm looking to see whether the axial sheath is inside of the bile duct, and it is. You can see here the axial sheath inside of the bile duct. We're going to advance the sheath as far in as we can. There, it's very nicely inside of the duct, and I'm going to lock. At this point, I'm now taking off the safety pin, the yellow safety pin. I'm unlocking the, the hub to release the distal flange. All I'm doing is pulling back slowly on this, and you will see the, flan the distal flange appear. It's very bright. At the point that I see the distal flange, I'm going to pull that flange back. I'm going to pull it up until it starts to deform. It's starting to deform now, and as soon as it takes on a more oval shape like this, I'm now going to lock again. So now it is locked, and I'm going to now deploy the proximal flange. The proximal flange will deploy inside of the working channel. So I'm now deploying the proximal flange. It's very important, of course, that the sheath is locked here so that the stent does not fall back. The proximal flange is now deployed. 
I'm now unlocking the sheath again, and I'm going to now capture the endoscopic view. So let's have the endoscopic view large now. And at this point, as soon as I see the wall, I, I'm going to start to advance the sheath forward. As I'm moving the scope, I'm looking for the wall. I'm moving myself away from the wall. And as I'm doing this, I am looking. There you see on the right side, I'm pushing it out. Pushing, all I'm doing is pushing the proximal flange out. And there it's deployed. Now you can see that there's a gush of bile that just came out. This is the pylorus on the endoscopic image. We're going to pop back in, and we should very nicely see the stent deployed. And it's down at, at the bottom. You can see the bile is nicely draining. So now we can do, uh, remove the axios, leaving the guide wire in place. There's the nose cone. There's the guide wire. We're removing the axios, leaving the guide wire in place. We have beautiful gush of, of bile. And then we'll just clamp this down. And we'll also take a look now on EUS. So this have the EUS image large. And you can see nicely there's a cyst there. And then the stent is here. Here's the stent. Here's the saddle. This is the proximal flange up here, the saddle, and the distal flange. So you, could s you can see the axial stent very nicely straddling the wall of the bile duct, the duodenal wall and bile duct. So this would be our image showing both flanges, distal and proximal and saddle. And the bile is already draining through the axial stent. All right, so now we're ready to switch to the endoscopic view again. We'll suck out a little bit of bile. You see it's flowing very nicely. Good. You can see we already have some, a lot of air in the bile duct. So we are now going to advance the scope through the axial stent. We are now through the axial stent. You can see the axial stent on fluoroscopy. We're in the bile duct. And the bile is very dark, and so that is making it a little difficult to see. Now we're going looking downwards towards the common uh, bile duct itself towards the ampulla where the stricture is, so we want to go in the opposite direction. So I'm just going to pull back a little bit, put a little bit more air in. You can see one more time the lumen. We just need to see which way to turn. So probably going up this way rather than this is the direction to the ampulla. And this direction now, going this way, will be up towards, there we go. See, this is the direction now going up. Now we're probably in, in one of the hepatic ducts, intrahepatic. That's the right intrahepatic duct here. So, I'm sorry, the left intrahepatic duct. So we have the entry into segments two and three. And we can actually go very high up into the intrahepatic ducts. This would be, of course, very useful uh, for staging uh, of a Klatskin tumor to determine uh, how uh, high up into the duct the Klatskin tumor extends. So this is a very nice view of the left intrahepatic duct slowly coming back. And of course, this is being a pediatric gastroscope, we could easily get biopsies here. Now we're going, this is the right anterior and posterior. So I found it. 
This is the right anterior and posterior. And this one here is probably the anterior, so let's see. Yes, it's the right anterior and the posterior is down here. So pull back and go down to this one and this should be the right posterior. And it is. So we have the right anterior and posterior, beautiful views. And slowly coming back. And the one structure we haven't seen yet uh, that's probably set off to the side is the cystic duct. I believe it's probably to the very right of this image here. So it probably takes off just to the right 